and welcome back to my playthrough of Magic Realm Light 30. I have to confess, not many things went wrong during the very first episode. I think I cheated once when I underpaid my assassin, so I'd really have to spend all eight of my remaining bucks. So this error already has been fixed. And additionally, I have to make one addition to the peer or pry action here. I think I played somehow incorrect. I think I rolled a three the last time, so I was able to find a passage in the from the belly region up there. And I, I think I told you that when I would roll a clue, this wouldn't help me in the village, but this is not correct because prying would have helped me to identify the site in the area which I yeah, peered into basically. So I would was able to pick up a rumor or something like that though. Then I would again roll which site would show up there. And then maybe this could help me to decide if I want to go to that region or possibly not. I also did some very poor decisions on how I yeah, took my wounds basically, and I think I really should have gone for one of those, um, and I see, just mix those up here, this is the fight shit, of course, but I think I should have really wounded this one, because a rest action on a shit that does not show any effort asterisk can be healed much easier than the chits that show two. These are really the worst, to be honest. Um, so I think this was really a very poor decision. But yeah, I think I cannot help it. Luckily, I am the knight errant, so I'm able to take a free rest action. I think this is pretty much all I will do on day four here, but I think I will still, yeah, I think this is something I have to do. Because if I would end up my day here, I would spend the evening here in this region, and then I would have to fight this demon here again. And with my wounds, I think this is something I will not do. So I think the very first thing will be to move there, and then with the remaining actions, I will take rest action. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, here we are in our bird song phase. So the first thing is to move back to the village and then I take four rest actions. Of course, you are right, I'm only allowed to do five actions, but this little R here at the very end is my free rest action, which I'm allowed to do because I'm the knight errant. So I think that's pretty much it. So let's do those actions. So let's move back here to the valley and then I can do my rest actions. Those normal shits I can fully heal with run west action. So which is really why I should have wounded those instead because then I could do away more rest action. So this was really a very poor decision, but yeah, I have to live with that right now. Those shits that show one effort asterisk, I can basically heal one stage per rest action. This is only fatigued, so it's only a blue one. So with one rest action, I can put it back to normal. I think this is what I will do. This was my very first rest action. Now I have three more. In order to heal those chits here that show two effort asterisks, I first have to fatigue one other chit that shows at least one of those effort asterisks here. So I think I will fatigue this one again. This is my second rest action and this also reduces the amount of stress on that wound. This was my second action. With the third action I will again put this chit back to normal. Then I have a third action. Again I have to fatigue this chit here or another chit with one star in order to fully heal this one here. These were four of my actions. Not true if you could follow me, but that's how it's supposed to play. Most important thing to keep in mind, those you can fully heal. So even if there would be a wound or that, you can directly heal it with one rest action. Those you can heal once per um, rest action, so for one stage, so from wounded to fatigue, from fatigue to normal. And those you also have to fatigue another shit that shows one of those effort asterisks. This was already the day, so let's roll who will appear. That's a six, and again we will see the warlock who will sell us some potions. Unfortunately, I'm really broke, but the good thing is the warlock will not try to fight me. 
Then we can jump directly into the next bird song phase and you see it already I will rest five times. Luckily I have this free rest action here so I will lose a complete day again. Also a day where my assassin could help me and keep in mind the assassin will leave us by the end of day 10 here and this is really crap but uh, I want to be fully healed. I just misinterpreted one rule in respect to resting so I have to live with that decision so yeah let's just go for it. So again, the first action I will completely heal this fatigued fight shit here with one star. With the second action I will more or less to heal this one one level. So again I have to fatigue one other token with it. This was my second action. With the third action I will heal this one again. With the fourth action, I will fully heal this one, but of course this one gets fatigued again. Again, I have to do that. And with my fifth rest action, I will then bring this fight shit also back to normal. And hopefully I explain it better this time. But yeah, these were basically all of my actions. And then before the monster roll, the warlock will leave us. And again, we will roll on the monster chart here. This is a three. The swordsman will appear. Wow, okay, I think we have to fight him now. That's of course not really correct. We have to engage him and possibly something could happen. But because I'm honorable, I think nothing bad will happen. So we will jump directly into the evening phase. So we roll here on the meeting table. He's a neutral character to us. So only on the price, uh, on the roll of six, it would mean trouble. But again, I can basically subtract one from our roll. So I will never be able to roll a six on this table here. So this is a three. A three means on the neutral one, this would be price times four. But I don't want to hire him. I just wanted to find out if we would result in a battle, which we won't. Okie dokie, let's start our next day and first thing is I will do my free hiding action and I'm doing this because of my cloak of mist there. Then I will move back to the forest M5 and we'll try to search three times. I was considering to move into that mountain region there but the problem is you need two move actions in order to move into a mountain region and I was really hoping for some more search results down there because the statue is not easy to loot because it also only has two of those loot spots here. So I think let's get started. Yes. Okay, the first thing to do would be to roll for our hide action. If any of those dice show a six, we were not able to hide. So let's see. Okay, we are lucky, which is good. So we are now a hidden character. Then we move down here to the forest. This was our second action. Now we take the search action. I think I was wrong. I was not able to find this crystal there, wasn't I? I cannot really remember. Was I not able to find this statue before? No, I think not. So with our first search action, we will do a locate action. So actually, I'm pretty happy that I have three of those search actions here. So again, I would roll on this table and we need at least no basically we need a four or a one now let's see what we will be able to find that's a five five is nothing wow this really really sucks so again my second action will also be a locate action i want to find that side please 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 again a five oh man i hate this <laughs> and then yeah let's roll again the third time this is our third action this time it's a four so we were able to find the site but unfortunately we were not able to loot it in this round wow i really hate that and this statue seems to be a very small statue if you are not able to find i think i spent now five search action in order to find this statue down there but yeah that's how things are. Good thing is we are hidden so if any nasty monster will show up uh, at the evening phase or after this monster roll right now um, I think we should be pretty much okay. Okay let's do the monster roll first. That's a five. A five. 
Oh no, there is no area. But again, we were rolling for the statue here. So we check the space here. This is a five. In the five, we don't see a forest symbol. So the monster roll initially is basically empty, but we still check if the side monster will show up. And here we see a side monster, so the statue, which means the imp will now show up. And the imp is a very nasty little character, to be honest, because um, he can curse me. So instead of wounding me, he will curse me. And for each curse I get, I would lose three fame points. Now I'm really not sure if I will to or if I would go to the negative, to be honest. I think right now I should be at two fame points because of the Cloak of Mist that provides two fame points. And actually, I'm really not sure, but to be honest, I would play it that way. And now I'm really happy I'm hidden. And I think I will not attack this guy, even though I might be able to take him out and he would grant me three fame points for that. Let me think about that for a second. Much like the demon, the imp is very fast, so he has a move of 2 and he has a very long reach of 17. So he will certainly go first in both of the combat rounds. And he takes tremendous amount of damage, which is okay. I think both of my characters should be able to deal with that. But on the other hand, I only gain 3 fame points when I try to get rid of him. And I can really lose a lot of points. Again, he goes first in both of his fight rounds. So I think I will not try to attack the imp at this point in time. I know this really sounds like a chicken, but right now I only have those two fame points. And yeah, I think I want to hold on to those. So then it would be the evening phase. I will not show myself or reveal myself. So the imp will not be able to find me. Then we go to the midnight phase. So this will wear off basically. I forgot to get rid of the swordsman up there. He's of course no longer present in the village. Just note that the imp is still there. But though this ends basically the day. And so we can jump into the next birdsong phase. And we are already halfway through the game. This is our Sunday basically. So magical energy will fill the magic realm here. So. Now on this day I would be able to cast spells even if I would not be the alchemist at this point in time but I think I don't have a spell so I have to live with that and all of the monsters that are on the board will also be replenished so go back to the table this also counts for all of the dead monsters here but the first thing I will do is still go for another free hide action then I will search twice so I will really try to loot the statue here and then I have to spend two move actions in order to move down here to the mountain region. Okie dokie, we have to roll for our hiding action. And if we are not able to hide, then this imp will basically block our action and then the rest of our actions will be gone. So this is really tough one. Yeah, basically I don't want to see a six now. Wow, okay, we are lucky, that's for sure. So we are hidden now. And this means we are able to move on or take our additional actions. And of course, the first thing I would want to do is to loot this statue down there. And you know the drill, we have to roll twice basically or two times. Wow, that's great. That's two by one rounded up. So this is really great. So we were able to find the very first slot this is very seldom to be honest yeah that's by two rounded up yeah that's a one awesome so we were definitely able to find this um the first slot of the statue here so let's roll on the treasure chart here that's a four let's see one two three this is gone we found a dead knight and with a dead knight we were able to find the true steel sword this really sounds promising let's have a look and the true steel sword is up here it can bring us 25 gold which is great it has a reach of seven much like our broadsword it also does more or less the same amount of damage one asterisk more so this is great and we gain five fame points for that. This is really, really awesome. Very good catch here. One, two, 
three, four, five additional fame points. So we are up at seven fame points already. And we found a really, really great weapon here. Awesome. Then we do our second loot action and we have to roll the same, basically. Two ones or one, one and a two in order to find that second slot here. These are really tough nuts to crack. No, not a chance. So the second loot action was not successful. And with the remaining two actions, we will move down here to the mountain region. We are still hidden, keep that in mind. But the next thing to do would be to roll what side there might be. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The wall. The wall is again a very different side here because we have to fatigue one of our tremendous tokens. But I think this shouldn't be a big deal. But it at least provides three of those loot space. So it's much easier to find something of value there. Let's roll for our monster roll. That's a one a in the mountain is a flying dragon. Wow, that's really a very nasty fella, possibly a smoke or, or so. And additionally, we have to check if there is a side monster, but no, that's not the case. Only the horde or the lair would provide this tea dragon here, which is also very nasty fella because yeah, wow, he has a double attack, basically also a head attack. We don't want to see that guy. And now we could decide to reveal ourselves during the evening phase in order to fight that flying dragon. And I think this is what I will do. It provides us 10 additional fame points and we need some fame, so why not? So let's get out of our cover and yeah, engage that flying monster up there. It's really not that strong. It has a normal decent movement value of four, reach of zero, which is great. So we will definitely go first in our very first combat round. So overall, I think this is a task we should be able to deal with. I think I will deploy the flying dragon onto my combat section here and i think i will no i will think i will place it like that so this was basically the deploy action now i have to do the attack and movement shits but i think i can already provide um the position for the assassin i think he will move or stay here at the area three so he will also target the area three here which is really great and he will certainly go fast and will also um, provide enough damage. As during the very first fighting round, the reach is the thing that's of importance. I will use my true steel sword and use the normal fight chit here to region one. So when he gets there, I will attack him basically. And in order not to get undercut, I might consider using my very fast movement ship, but I think I feel rather confident. I will go first. I have two of those sections covered. No, I think I will play it like this and I think I will place my movement token to the right. Let's do the position roll and the only thing that I don't want to see basically is that he will stay where he is. So let's hope for something cool. Wow, we are extremely unlucky again. So he does not change position. And so phew, I hate that. And uh, will we be able to undercut? Let me see. Oh yeah, we are lucky. The assassin will be able to undercut the enemy. So he has a fight value of three and the dragon only has a speed of four. So we are undercutting him, which really means it doesn't matter where he is because he will be so fast his attack that the dragon will not be able to reposition himself. Wow, that's really awesome. But now we have to see if we do enough damage. He only does a damage of M, so medium damage. But he has two of those asterisk symbols. So with one asterisk symbol, he can basically decrease the armor value of the other opponent by one. The opponent has a heavy 
with some brackets around, which means it's an armored one. So with one star, he make it he makes it to a normal age, and with a second asterisk, he will be able to reduce that damage from heavy to medium, and this means this is certainly enough to take out the dragon here before he gets the opportunity to strike back. Keep in mind, during the very first round of combat, the reach is the thing that matters and the assassin has a reach of 3 and the dragon only has a reach of 0. Awesome! Great stuff! Which means we get 10 more fame point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Wow, this was really great. We are up to 17 fame points already. So this really looks like great progress so far. We haven't used any of our asterisk symbols, so we don't have to fatigue them. We didn't take a wound, which was really awesome. So overall, a very, very cool day for our knight errant. Then we come to the midnight phase, and as it's the seventh day, all of those guys will move back to the supply, basically. So we have the demon and the, what was it, the serpent? Yep, a serpent, that's correct. So we have a complete reset in the magic realm. Let's start our next day with a birdsong phase. Again, we will take our free hide action. This is always great. I will do three search actions with one or two. I will hopefully able to find the wall. Then I still have one or two remaining loot actions. And then I will start to move back up into the village. Maybe I will buy some stuff over there or whatever. Of course, I have to really keep on moving up. That's for sure. Let's do the hide action first. Again, we don't want to see a six. Okay, that's great. So here we are. This was our first action. And then we will take the first search action. And therefore, we will look at the locate table. That's a six. Six is nothing. This was our first search action. The second search action. Four. Great. So we were able to find the vault. So let's mark it here. And then with our third action, we will try to loot the vault. So it will be possible, but with our very first action, because it's a vault and I really have to open it first, I have to fatigue one of my tremendous chits. But yeah, this is something I should be able to do. Let's see. Okay, that's a five, which means the first, uh, the third, slot has been searched therefore i have to fatigue one of my tremendous chits i think i will go for this one for now yeah that's the case then i have to roll on the treasure table that's a six so one two three four five six it's the deft gloves worth 10 golds six fame this is great and i gain a fight level two chit Wow, this is really awesome. And I think loot 1d6. Okay, I think I can now loot with only 1d6. Oh, this is overall so great. Awesome, really awesome. So let's use this pawn for my additional L2 fight sheet. But I think as far as I understood it, I can really only use this one as, yeah, basically a fight or during fights actually. And it doesn't have any um, effort asterisks. I still have one action and I really should have stayed at the vault because there are still two more slots available and with my new gloves, yeah, it's much easier but I have already recorded that action so I have to move back to the forest so possibly I will go back during the next day. Okie dokie, let's do the monster roll, that's a five, we are in the forest, let's see, no but the imp is back. <laughs> Wow, how unlucky can we get? So again, we have to place this fella next to us. Good thing is we are hidden. And now I really don't want to go back because again, I would have to hide in order to move there. And yeah, this imp will basically stay where he is until the bitter end of the game because they only disappear either if I fight them successfully or during one of the day 7, 14th or 21. So yeah, I think I will start moving up from now. 
Okay, there were no battles basically during the night, so we can directly jump into the next day. Again, I will do a free hide action, then I will try to loot twice, and then I will move back to the village, and in the village I will really try to trade. But it really now all comes to our rolling ability, because again, if we roll a six, then yeah, our day will be done basically. No, that's not a problem. A three and a one, which means we are hidden again. This also means we are able to loot the statue right now. And due to our awesome deft gloves, I will be able to only roll one die and half it basically. Okay, that was the first loot action, not successful. So we are looking for one or a two basically. Second one, no, also not a success. Okay, cannot really help it. Next action is to move up here to the village in there. I wanted to trade with the village. First of all, I will sell my broadsword up there. This provides me eight pieces of gold. This is really awesome. And for two golds, I think I will then buy one vial of healing or try to buy the vial of healing of course i have to roll first the problem is i cannot buy the village a drink but we start here on this row there so we are better off it seems so let's roll on the meeting table we can subtract one Keep that in mind that's a four minus one that's a three which means the price is only doubled so I could afford it, but I think I will hold on to my money because I have to hire the assassin back anytime soon because at the end of the next day he will leave us and we really need those companions with us. Let's do the monster roll. That's a six. Ah, and next ah, again we see the warlock. I was really hoping for the swordsman again. Huh. Okay. Cannot really help it. There is no real evening phase. There are no fights. So let's jump into midnight. We will lose our hidden status. So let's jump into the next bird song phase again. We will take our free movement act, um, hiding action. Then we will move into M1 there. Then we will take our free rest action. Keep in mind we still have one fatigue chit. And then we will do three times the search action. I should have rested first, but yeah. Mm. Ah, it doesn't really matter, I guess. So let's hide first. Okay, that's not a problem. We are hidden again. That's great. Then we will move into M1 there. We have to roll here. It's a one. So we see the horde or actually only heard that there is a horde somewhere. And next we take our free rest action so we can remove the fatigue token from this one here basically with one free um with the rest action and then we try to locate the horde let's see that's a three okay we found a passage but the passage really doesn't do us any good because there is already a way to the mountain area and we still need to use two movement actions here. We already have a passage, so yeah, it really doesn't do us any good. So let's do our second search action. That's a six, basically nothing. And our third action, that's a three. Again, we have found a passage. Wow, again, a total waste of time, basically. So let's do the monster roll for the day. That's a five. Let's see, what do we have? Yeah, here there is a cave. So we see a spider appearing, which shouldn't be that big of a deal. We are still hidden. Let's check for the side monster. No, only the statue is here. This time we are kind of lucky. But still we have to face that spider. The spider provides us 12 potential fame points. She's pretty fast, but her attack isn't and her reach is also not that fast. So we should really be able to take her out, to be honest. Okie dokie, let's reveal ourselves and fight the spider. And again, we will go 
first, both of us, so I would think I will place her here again. I leave the assassin there. Um, I think I will also use my heavy attack. I think again I will put it here and I will use my slow movement, which I will put maybe here so and i really do hope we will be able to take her up but again the assassin is really fast no he's not able to undercut her this time she has a movement rating of three so this time he really has to hit so when the spider stays there and we are not able to get her then we would definitely take a wound okie dokie let's do the reposition roll again we are so unlucky i hate this Okay, cannot help it, so she will stay where she is. This means our attack misses, his attack misses because he hits for three here because the spider is there. And now it's basically the turn of the spider. The spider will try to hit us here with her attack of four because her attack is faster than our slow movement. She will be able to undercut her, which means she will hit our shield. So the shield will certainly take a damage, let's mark it like this, but because she's doing a medium damage I have to take wound and this time I think I will wound this movement shit here. Let's do the second round of combat, this time I, second round of combat, the movement speed or the attack speed is defining the initiative. So she again attacks with a four. I think I also want to attack with a four. I will use my tremendous chit here and I have to take this movement because I can only use two of those asterisk symbols in total. I think I will also leave the ninja or the assassin here. And I think this time uh, I don't want to lose my shield to be honest. So I think I will put the movement shit here again. She will definitely undercut me there. Yeah, that's for sure. So let's roll for the repositioning here. That's a one. This means positions two and three will change. Okay, this is great. I think this is great. I will not be able to hit her but the ninja will because he has a movement or attack speed of three here. So his attack is certainly, I think it should be the first one now. I think, yeah, it, he will be, he will do the first attack, which is great. M3, two stars, which is clearly enough to take out that spider before she will be able to hit us. Awesome. And the spider provides us 12 more Pain points. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Great job. So let's bring all of our chits back. I still have to fatigue one chit here. So I think, huh, I have to fatigue. What do I want to fatigue? I think I will fatigue this chit here. I can basically heal it with only one rest action. Unfortunately, the contract with the assassin has just ended, but he will stay here until the next monster roll there. So I will be able to rehire him right away. So let's jump into the next bird song phase. Again, free hide action, three rest action, a normal rest action, the higher action, and then two search action. So let's go for it. First, let's try to hide. Yep, we are successful. That's already great news. Then we take our free rest action. Then we take our second normal rest action so we can bring it from wounded to fatigued here. Then we will try to rehire the assassin. I think I will buy him a drink so I can go to the friendly column there. Let's roll the dice minus one that's a three one two three prize times two that's great so i only have to pay four gold which means i rehired the assassin then i take my first search locate action ah, again we are not lucky second action crap really crap i'm 
it's just losing my time here. I really hate it. This was already the day. Let's do the monster roll. That's a one. We are in a cave location. And again, we see a flying dragon up there. I know we know this fella and I think we should be able to deal with him. So let's place him here. The problem now is we also have a side monster now. So we have the horde, which means this T dragon will also show up there. So I'm again not so sure if I really want to engage it. This is the second attack token here basically for that dragon. If I really want to reveal myself, this would be three monsters against two of us. And I still have one fatigue thing. My shield is damaged. Poof. This was really bad luck. So I think I will not reveal myself doing this evening phase. I know I am a chicken, but poof. I don't want to do that right now. So this was already the evening. Let's go into the midnight phase, which means we are no longer hidden. So let's jump into the next birdsong phase. I think I will not really play it until the bitter end. Let's do our again hiding, resting, then moving into the mountain region, then do two times the search. And again, I forgot to get rid of the Warlock there, doesn't really matter. Let's do the hide action, no problem. Great, so we are hidden. <laughs> if not, then we would have to fight those guys anyway. Then I take my free rest action. So this shit is no longer fatigued. With two movement action, we will move into that mountain region right now. Only the lair is left here. And now we will try to locate it. So let's see. That's a three and a two. Again, we found a passage. The passage is okay, I guess, because we can move then direct over to the valley. Let's do the second locate action. This time we are lucky. Awesome. We have found the lair, but unfortunately we don't have any more search actions left. Let's do the monster roll. That's a three. We are in a mountain region. Let's see. Mountain, mountain, mountain. Wow. Nothing. No. Wow. That's great. And there's also no side creature. Wow, this time we are really lucky. So the only thing that does happen, we will lose our hidden status. So let's jump into the next midnight phase. Again, we will hide, then we will search three times and then moving back to the village via the passage we just found. So let's hide first, not a problem. Well, we are really lucky in respect to this action. Then we take our search action or loot actions. We actually found the lair. The good thing is due to our gloves, we are allowed to roll only one die. Let's see, and half it. Perfect, this was the very first slot. Great, so let's roll the treasure table. Uh, this is one, two. We found the belt of strength, nine faint points and level two, level one is H. Not sure what it does actually. So basically I can convert my chits up one level. So this would be a two star would be go from next to next uh, to tremendous and one star would be in heavy one. But I think it really doesn't matter without this one. I think this L one would be a medium chit now. Okay, this can be helpful because it's a pretty fast attack, but apart from that, it really doesn't do us any good. But of course, it provides us nine additional fame points. I already forgot how many times I rolled. I think this was my very first roll on the loot thing. So let's roll again. Six, no, that's not a success. We had three search actions, one more. We need a one or a two, basically. No, we were not able to find that second space. So I think with our last action, we would have to move back to the village. Let's roll for the monster. And here we have the four. The four is the assassin. The assassin is already with us. So nothing really shows up in the village. This was our day. We will lose our hidden status. And then it's our very last day again. We will take our free hiding action. I really want to be hidden, so I will hide again. 
and then I will move back to the cave and do two search actions. I really hope to find something up there. Let's hope for the best here. Okay, let's hide the first time. Okay, this was not a problem. Okay, yeah, I could have taken it. Now my second rest action. I think I don't have to take that as far as I know until, yeah, I am hidden. So nothing else happened. Then I will move into the cave region and there I will try to find the horde. Let's do the first locate action. Yeah, we have two. Awesome, that's a four. Great, great, great. So we were able to find it. So let's do that. And with our last search roll, we will do a loot action and we will definitely find one of them. That's great. That's two, which means we found the second space here. So again, we are allowed to roll on the thing here. And I'm not sure if I counted that correctly before. I think I have to skip those items that are already marked here. So I think when I roll now, I will do it right. So only counting the empty slots here. I think otherwise it doesn't really make sense. Okay, that's three. Let's see, one, two, and three. The Dragon Fang necklace worth 12 fame points. And we are allowed to control one dragon, but okay, we require magic, we don't have magic but yeah this brings us 12 additional fame points one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve fame points awesome let's roll one last time on the monster chart here that's a five we are in the cave so again we would see the t spider but the t spider is already out so we killed it so we cannot respawn, which leaves us with those two creatures in total three attacks. And I think I will not fight them. I will be happy with my fame points I collected so far. So let's see how well we did. That's five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Or well, basically we count them by fivers because that's a victory point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11 victory points in total. I don't have enough gold. I don't have learned any spells. So in total that brings us to 12 VP. Oops, sliding. Not sure if that's a good result or not. Possibly not. I think I should have really fought a little bit more. I lost a lot of days just healing and such. Traveling back and forth was not really lucky when it came to find those sites. Actually, I think I also lost at least one or two additional days there. But overall, I'm pretty happy with my result. I really enjoyed this little playthrough of Magic Realm Lite. I hope you did so too. It's really a very nice idea. You can play it relatively fast, especially when you don't have to explain a lot of things. So I lost a lot of stuff explaining and re-explaining stuff. So overall, it's really a fun and fast a little game. It's not easy to master or to learn, but it's definitely worth taking that effort. Hope to see you soon in one of my next playthroughs, walkthroughs, what not. And yeah, until then, bye bye.